Hey folks, Jake P here. I'm in a bucket right now. It's October 16th, 2020. We're in River Ridge, Louisiana today, tackling a bee tree. ASAP Tree Company called me out, courtesy of Andrew, their main guy. He watched a couple of my YouTube videos and told the owner of the company, hey, give this guy a call. Thanks for the hookup there, Andrew. Bees are going in and out of this tree limb, about 35 feet up. We're gonna smoke the two different spots so that Andrew can go ahead and cut the limb that the bees are in, lower it down to the ground, cut the rest of the tree down, and then I'll go ahead and use my chain saw it and surgically as possible open the limb up. Wait, what? Let's see that again. We'll open the limb up that the bees are in, move them into a high box. We leave on out of here this evening with a new beehive. Well, hello, my pretties. You up here, you just don't look down, folks, you know what I mean? All right, just bring me to the left now. These, these bees seem pretty chill. I don't know when this part was cut, but like it healed up. Why are we doing this? Because the tree has to come down into water. They cut one tree down already over there, over here. That was recent. And then this one a long time ago. All water oaks, they get termites in them. We had Formosa termites down there, bad. After about 25, 30 years, what I'm told by the arborists is these uh, water oaks get a cavity in them and the termites move in and they start eating that dead stuff and they'll go into the good stuff. I guess this one's having problems coming down the bees are going to be relocated everybody's doing the ethical thing by trying to relocate and save this hive that's what we're about folks the hive's a little bigger than we thought folks it's gonna to have to go further over to that limb he's tied off to they must be pretty hollow. Bees are pretty chill. They're flying around a little bit more now because it's warmed up slightly. They're all flying around him. He's doing exactly what most people don't do. He's not swatting at them, <laughs> which is great. That's what you don't want to do. You never want to swat at bees that are flying around you. He's not getting stung. They're even landing on his shirt and stuff. Very relaxed and doing what he needs to do to get his job done. On a nice, pleasant Friday. I get myself into today, folks, huh? <laughs> All right, just bring right on in here, brother. Come on, just, just lay right on down over here. All right. Got the brood nest and everything contained in this limb. I got to think. I got to think this is the majority of the hive, though. Woo! We got the next section out. I don't know if you can tell, there's no more comb up there. Thank goodness. The project got a little better. I think there's just a little bit of honeycomb left in this thing. And it's just about maybe another foot in. There's just a little bit of honeycomb. Girls. All right. Yeah. Most of them just in there chilling. So the, our queen should be in this section. There's just a little bit of honeycomb in there.
<sighs> maybe we get lucky and that's all the cuts I gotta make. Let me show you the, what's going on with the box, folks. We hadn't transferred any comb or anything. I did spray a little bit of Swamp Commander. Swamp Commander mimics Nazanoff or orientating pheromone. On the bottom board. And we got bees in the box, covering the box. They love that Swamp Commander. All right, so, so we did. I made a cut straight through here, across that side. So this chunk right here, it was moving on me earlier. This one should come right out. And hopefully this, this piece will come out. And then that next piece below it, and this piece should come out. Then once you know we expose this thing, we'll do what we normally do. Start taking combs out, frame up what we can, get our bees gravitate to the box. Yeah, they've come alive a little bit since it's warmed up. I've only taken literally like I think two stings. So I think the most intrusive stuff is done. Hopefully there's not too much more cutting I have to do. But I feel good about where we are right now, folks. Let's get into it. good learned a few things I guess over the years cut trees so so far anyway these two these two pieces want to call it a plan all right pull this over I know I have no idea where the queen is right now if y'all wonder so she's in here somewhere all right. let me get this piece out She could be in that mess. She could be. That's a mess of bees. See if she might see if we get lucky. See if we get lucky. It's me and the bees here folks today. It's me and the bees on a Friday evening. It's about 10 degrees cooler than it's been. I'm enjoying myself. Filling with these bees. Look at all that honey. That's a good bit of honey. Um, I thought the brew nest would be here. Maybe it is down there. Well, it could be one of these hives that's got like 80% honeycomb and 20% brood. Mm -hmm. I see that. I like bees like that. Very productive, gentle. Maybe not too, too many bees to deal with. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can pick through here. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe she, you know, there's a bunch of bees. That's just it's worth going through it to see. See if we can get lucky and find her. Let's grab that piece of all them bees on it. Come out and just move it by our box. Let's just do that, okay? Okay. Ah, 
that looks like we crew. I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, okay, so there's that one little peak. Alright. So, let's see. Pile of bees, pile of bees, small pile of bees. Could have queen bee in here somewhere. Uh, uh, I'm gonna fill with this a little bit. Let's look at this. Oh, they got a lot of honey there. I don't really even see too much brew. Must be underneath all that honeycomb. Look at all this, folks. Look at this. You've probably been in there a couple of years, at least, huh? I don't see any like black comb. But... Some dark comb. Now we just kind of pick at it. Maybe they'll calm down a little bit. It likes stinging my ears, though. Because <laughs> I don't particularly care too much for them. I'm not going to lie. This thing's kind of rude. You know, that queen could be, I mean, we got some bunches of bees here. I mean, we got bees here too. Let's see if we can look in here. Let's see if we can come up with. Here's some foundation. It'll be our little bridge. Using foundation, which has got beeswax on it, and it's you know familiar scent. It's giving them a little bridge and fanning, and they're starting to run towards our box. Like I said earlier, I put a little bit of swarm command, which is commercially available to be attractive. It mimics uh, Nazanoff, which is uh, one of these pheromones that they put out. It's orientated pheromone. Just put a couple of drops in the bottom board, and you see that I think, along with little bits of propolis and John Chrome I got in there, it smells familiar to him. Maybe uh, when we get lucky, we'll see one that's got a fat butt on it. Gauge we put on a box, and it's really kind of all downhill from there. Once we got them gravitating to the box, then almost all our work is done. It's just a matter of them going in the box, and that requires just some time. You know, they just have to leave the box here, but go off and Go some time and then come back tonight with the girls in the truck and take them away. This in here might be an old squirrel nest, folks, and I'm seeing it looks like hair. You know, I have run across skeletons before, rodent skeletons, rats, uh, and squirrels, uh, birds. So, uh, yeah, so we could run across maybe some skeletized remains here. I'm not sure what we're going to dig out, but uh, if we run across that, I'll be sure to give you a close-up. pretty confident we have a dead animal that is propolized in this chunk of whatever this is I'm holding. I really don't want to tear it apart to find out what it was, but I don't know if you can see this some black hair. It might have been a squirrel. See how they kind of completely propolized over this? So they make propolis, again, from tree sap. All right. So I think there was a squirrel nest in here. My best guess. And um, they killed the squirrel. I mean, it could have been like a baby raccoon. I don't know. There's a lot of dark, weird-looking hair. Look at a possum, maybe. Y'all getting that? But I'm not going to open this thing up and go through it to find out. I don't want to say anything. A lot of times the bones would just fall apart, so that could have happened already. But there's hair. It was either a nest or there's a dead animal there, you know, from some time ago. I don't know. But see how they, they'll just propolize right over that? I did that. 
<laughs> At this stage in the game, folks, we've removed the majority of the comb. Not a lot of it was frameable. A lot of it came out in pieces. I was able to frame up a couple of comb sections. A lot of it was just going to feed back to the bees. The majority of the bees have gravitated to a high box, albeit I have not run across the queen yet. Gotten to the point where I believe that maybe we weren't going to find her. Maybe she was injured or something. I don't know. When we lowered the big section of limb, I think some of the brood comb sections went up compressing against each other and they were saturated with honey. As I was pulling them out, mm -hmm. I realized that she could have been injured. And then lo and behold, I just happened to look at a little section of tree that I cut up. I just happened to be looking at this little area and kind of zoomed in and there she was. <laughs> she survived and um, oh, happy day. <laughs> Her majesty, folks. She survived. Thank God. I'm so elated right now. I could not tell you <laughs> how excited I am right now. Oh, we got her. She survived. Thank the Lord. Oh, this makes me so happy. Oh, man, all this work, you know, all this work, all this time. And uh, we got her. Oh, Lordy. I just happened to walk up and... Uh, I really didn't think she was on here. I thought she was in the box because there's a ton of them in the box. And um, I just grabbed the hive tool and grabbed the little clump of bees. Mm -hmm. And I was just gonna shake them in front of the box and she was on that little clump. Wow, that was just luck. That's all that was. But sometimes it's good to be lucky, folks. I'll take it. All right, let's cage her and put her in the setup. I'm a very happy man right now, folks. Very, very happy. There she is. She just ran right in that cage when I opened it up, too. She just ran in there. All right, let's put her in the setup. I'm happy, folks. I'm very happy. And I hope you're having a happy day, too. All right, folks. Oh, I ain't gonna lie, I'm kind of worn out. <laughs> uh, oh, we got the queen towards the end here, and that just thrilled me, you know. For a minute there, it was looking like uh, maybe she got smushed, you know, when the uh, tree was low. I mean, we did everything possible to, you know, be gentle with this, but uh, weren't using a crane, so it was, you know, sometimes. So with the crane, you know, you can lower it, you can do whatever you want. So we were lowering with a rope and then using the bobcat. So, yeah, the finesse maybe wasn't quite what it could be. But, and honestly, uh, where the brood comb was, I didn't think it was there. I thought it was on the other end. And so when we positioned the, the, the uh, limb, there was a lot of honeycomb, you know, where all the weight is on top of the brood comb sections. And they were really compressed. They were quite a few beetles, you know, on some of that brood. We literally used like one piece of brood. Uh, that's all I could pull out really and, uh, and utilize. A lot of it was breaking up when I was trying to pull it out. And like I said, it had a lot of beetles on it. But um, anyway, I mean, they were happy with the box. You know, we used that swarm commander and uh, with the propolis and a little bit of drawing comb in there. You know, they really favored the box. So, I mean, a good mess of them were in there, you know, from early on really they were just going right to it and i'll be back at dark and they should all be in the box because it's cooler now so <clears throat> they 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 should want to join up with the other ones and cluster not like a job i did the other night where it was like in the mm -hmm. high 80s at night and i had to work for an hour to get the rest of them in the box this should work out tonight they should be in this box tonight when i come back all 
snug as a bug in a rug. So I hope y'all really enjoyed this video. I appreciate y'all mm -hmm. tuning in and taking the time from your busy day to watch these videos. I try to make them educational as well as entertaining. So I hope you're getting something out of it, some enjoyment. And, uh, you know, it's you guys and gals out there that drive me to, to make these videos. Uh, you know, some extra work involved, obviously, doing, you know, doing a removal and filming. I do all this by myself. So, uh, but y'all been very kind to me. You've supported my channel. And um, you're driving me to, to continue with this. And I'll just keep on doing this as long as I am physically able to do so. So, until the next one, I hope y'all having a fantastic day because you know I am. All right, folks, I'm back on this job here. Look what we got. All the bees are tucked in there. See, when the temperatures dip, they have to cluster. Not even one outside. They're all inside, folks. So let's put them on the truck and take them away. All right, folks, this is the colony we removed from the tree. And we're going to go ahead and release our queen. Okay? You can see they've chewed through the rubber bands, a couple of them anyway, that were on, on the frames and they've pushed them out of the hive. See how they did that? Hello girls. All right, let's go in and go ahead and release the queen. All right, let me go ahead and reach down and grab it. <laughs> I'm getting stung. left hand and I'm right handed folks so. oh boy that's ain't pretty I need my right hand give me a minute <laughs> all right I reached on down in there and we we got to clean out folks back together and we'll go ahead and see if we can't film the release folks okay so we'll get a nice close-up for you okay just gonna open it up so she'll uh, get her to run okay come on out boy there she is Going. Going down. Going down. I don't know if she went down or if she's on the underside of the catcher, folks. Let's see. I think she ran down. Yeah, I don't, I don't see her. Hives getting long, I've had to feed them fine. Then let's go ahead and feed these girls, folks. We're in uh, December now. Kind of need to watch them come out. They love this stuff. <laughs> I usually kind of shove it in there a little bit. We've had a little cold snap recently, and they're probably clustered in there a little bit. They will come out, rest assured. 
feet on this. I guarantee you that. But just a little cold. And they're moving a little slow today, folks. Moving a little slow. Let's go ahead and load them up, though. I suppose I think we'll warm up a little bit tomorrow. Then we got more rain coming. And then eat another front. We'll make sure the girls have feed, you know, to withstand a little bit of cold we get. It's warmed up now. This is how winter's off, folks. So we get a front that comes through, and uh, let's say the temperature drops in the uh, mid 30s. We rarely get many freezing days down here. Okay, and I am about 10 miles west of New Orleans. You know, if we do get a cold front and we're in the mid 30s or whatever, you know, that might last literally like two to three days, and then right behind that cold front is a warm-up trend. So right now uh, we're in a warm-up trend where literally like yesterday morning. It was probably in the uh, low 40s, and uh, now it's probably in the mid to upper 60s. So, you know, about a 20 degree differential, and the bees are much more active today. I do have some fondant in my hand that I'm going to feed them. So basically, fondant is sugar. You boil in a pot with some water and a touch of vinegar. You mix it, you pour it out like on a cookie sheet. You let it set. It's a great supplement for the bees in cold weather because it doesn't have quite the moisture content that a liquid would have. You know, what's really bad for bees is when it's cold and damp. This provides them with some feed, but without the added humidity that liquid feed would give them. Let's put this out, see if, see if the girls come out. I've already got a few, you know, I'm trying to land on it. Really. <laughs> It only takes a minute for them to find this stuff. They'll come out there and they literally will cover this stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and, uh, <laughs> you see the bees are doing well, you know. We weren't able to, you know, frame up a whole bunch of stuff, but, uh, and I haven't been, there. I'm not gonna open the, the hive. I haven't been in there, but, you know, we got bees coming and going with pollen. I did check, uh, at some point, I don't think I have any footage of her progress, but uh, you know, I had checked, I don't know, it was a week later or something like that. I just went in real quick to see that she was laying and stuff, and you know, she was doing fine. And um, so I don't have any footage of, of the interior of the hive right now, but uh, as you can see, they're, they're coming and going. Look, they're already starting to cover the fondant. All right, and I got another hive over here that I removed, and I'm gonna give them some as well. But uh, and we'll come back to these girls in just a minute. You'll see them just really, <laughs> you know, just cover. Obviously, these are very gentle bees too, and appreciative bees. We're very appreciative <laughs> that we're feeding them today. So uh, let's uh, let's step over here. And this other one you gotta give them some too because you don't want them to go over to the other girls and and, uh, and fight they, they haven't really done any of that though you know i have not had these do any kind of robbing they're both pretty strong colonies you know not usually when i feed one i feed the other let's give them some they love this stuff. And again, this is just supplemental. You know, we're in winter and there's not a lot out there that is producing any amount of nectar. That's done. You wouldn't want to start keeping bees this time of the year. If somebody called me and said, hey, JP, I want to start keeping bees right now, you know. Right now, watch your videos and right now I want to start. I'm like, nope. We'll start up in the springtime, which here is probably about March. You know, late February, early March is when they start swarming. March, Marchish, April, somewhere in there. Depending on fronts and all that, it's a good time to start up here. That way you get some clover and then you got ligustrum and various different things. And then in May, we got our Chinese tallow flow. And you know, you set them up to where they have different nectar flows and they're able to collect nectar and make honey and all that good stuff. This time of the year, they can get some pollen. They always can find pollen. Find the nectar this time of the year, no. They're not gonna do it, so you have to feed them if they need it. So that is it for now. I really hope you guys and gals out there enjoy the video and y'all having a fantastic day, because you know I am. Until the next one, you know, take care and thank you so much for taking your time to watch the videos. Have a great day. All right, several minutes later, let's see what we got going on here, folks. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Yeah, just wearing it out.